So now, in this video, we're going to look at this circuit here, but uh, we're going to use this breadboard power supply to power it. My most uh, popular video by far is uh, just covering the breadboard uh, power supply, and a lot of people seem really interested in it, so we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail. So, this is a way that you can get 5 volts to the breadboard. You need an actual power supply, though, to uh, power the breadboard uh, power supply. Other people try to find creative ways to uh, power it, but we're going to just cover the, you know, most uh, basic way to power it. So, in any case, we don't need this jumper to uh, jump across there, and uh, doesn't seem to want to go on the board, so I'm just going to throw it out of the way. Um, and then, these are going to be in the way. So, usually I clip alligator clips from the power supply to uh, power the rail, and then this one powers that red rail. I use that red jumper to come over there. We don't need to do that with the uh, breadboard power supply. I'm just going to tack them in somewhere down there. And uh, do not, uh, especially these uh, cheap boards, do not force things in. Kind of slowly ease them in right there with steady pressure. If you uh, bend the metal, that it uh, won't make a good connection ever again uh, with the cheap boards. The uh, more expensive boards are a little more forgiving. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of pins, as you can see, underneath there to plug the breadboard power supply into the breadboard. And now, if we set this little jumper to the five volts, I think you can see that uh, there, um, then it will output five volts once we give a higher voltage. You want at least probably seven volts. Nine is really good. Um, 12 is a, a little bit high. They are made for 12 volts, but I have a uh, power supply that uh, when I set it to 5 volts, I mean to uh, 12 volts, it was actually outputting uh, I think like 13, almost 14 or something, and uh, that seemed to have been frying these. Um, so I just like to stay at 9, that's my general tip, but you're probably fine with the 12. We could set the output voltage to 3.3 if we want, or we can just uh, cut off power. Uh, that's just this rail right here, this rail is separate. So those are the two voltage regulators. So they do not convert the voltage. The power that you put into the input won't be the same power as the output. That's, you know, it's not 100% uh, perfect, even if it is a converter, um, but it's close. This is a regulator. Uh, whatever the higher voltage is here is just going to be lost. So the amount of current flowing into here is going to be the same uh, flowing out. So all that extra voltage is just waste. Uh, it's mostly going to heat up uh, these components right there. So that's another reason why the closer you are to uh, 5 volts, although you should be a couple volts higher um, because of, uh, you know, other losses, then the uh, closer you are, the more efficient it's going to be. So I'm going to set these both back to a 5, and uh, I'll uh, try to come back to this uh, other stuff later. But uh, for now, that's about all you need to know for the unit here when it comes to uh, preparing it. So now, here I have a pocket oscilloscope. Um, probably not going to use this in this video. I have no plans to right now. But it came with this adapter right there. So it's AC to DC. You plug this into an outlet. I'm not going to show that. That's pretty straightforward. And uh, when it does, then it takes 120. Well, it looks like 100 to 240 volts there. Uh, that's the frequency that uh, you can expect in the US, 60 hertz. Um, but in any case, it outputs 9 volts up to one amp that straight line means you know just steady direct current or you could have it like pulsing as well at uh, nine volts that's what those little dashes means it's like nine volt zero nine volt zero and uh, so on so any case um, you can buy like I said I have an adjustable one I could set it to 12 volts but one of them was bad it outputted more than uh, 12 volts but I could also set it to nine I could set it to all kinds of things and uh, yeah that just plugs right into this little pocket oscilloscope and uh, I'm gonna get that out of the way now um, we're just gonna use this plug from that so you probably have you know stuff that you plug in that uh, has a, a barrel jack like this and uh, you know preferably 9 volts you know 7 volts would be okay as well but in any case yeah you just uh, plug that in right there and then you just have to plug the 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 other end into the outlet and uh, so I don't know if it's on or off right now um, we'll come back and plug that in 
So now I got the extension cord uh, close enough and we'll pull this out. If I plug it in and the light uh, turns on, we'll know that it was on. Um, if it doesn't slide out of view right there. And uh, there we go. So yeah, it wasn't on or it's faulty. That could be as well. Um, I press the button. Now we got the green light. So now the rails are powered at uh, five volts. That's what we set there. Unless something went wrong, of course, you know, it shouldn't have, but uh, any case. We will now start working on the circuit. So now, this circuit is showing a single pole. You can see there's a one line right there. This is the same circuit, just showing two different positions. A single pole, double throw. There's two uh, places that we can put the uh, switch. So um, that may make sense already. If not, I'm gonna demonstrate it, so don't worry. Um, but in any case, usually you just buy a single pole, double throw switch. Uh, component and uh, wire up the three terminals as need be but uh, we're going to uh, continue with what we were covering in this video and uh, I'm looking through the camera when I'm wiring that so it's a little harder to aim uh, but in case we got these two jumpers to ground on the separate rails right there um, they're going to the negative supply I should say um, of the uh, power supply the uh, red LEDs doesn't matter what order uh, you put them we are going to put the cathode the short lead of the LED and uh, put the short lead the cathode to where the jumper is. Long lead the anode is above. If you accidentally put it in backwards, I'll do that with this one right here, it will not light up when we put that to the positive supply. It's just going to uh, stop more than 5 volts and uh, if you get it like 12 volts I think that will destroy it but 9 volts you should be okay. It'll, it should stop like 9 volts where no current will flow because it's in backwards, just won't light up. And so now I'm going to turn it around in the right way right there. So, you know, we don't have to worry about that. And I thought I uh, went to grab a second 220 ohm resistor. Okay, back. I found a 220 ohm resistor. So we have 220 ohm resistor. going to put it to uh, the positive supply. Not, or no, I'm not going to put it to the positive supply. I almost miswired this. What I'm going to do is... Uh, kind of shrink this down. We want to put it on its own roll right there. So we uh, will do that right now. It's floating. Put it up there. Hopefully you can see. Let's see how much closer I can get. Uh, there we go. So yeah, it's up uh, like just one more roll. This one I can go up one or, or more and uh, so on. And um, so there we go. We are up to an empty roll. That's the main thing. Turn the power on. Of course, nothing's going to happen right there. So to get that voltage across the load, we're going to take a jumper. And the reason why I didn't move this orange one is because this is one option. You can uh, plug it in there and then make sure you come to the resistor. I accidentally bumped the resistor there. When you wire stuff, generally it's best not to uh, have the power on when you wire it. Um, but in any case, I don't want to accidentally go into the row uh, where the LED is. But there you can see, LED is on right there. So this is our uh, right side. So. I guess we could say it's that one. That LED is on, that LED is off because no power is coming to it. And then we can move over uh, here and I accidentally bumped it again. Um, but as long as I bump this side of the resistor, we're okay. The other side, that would be a short circuit and that's not good for the LED and uh, maybe even the power supply. And um, they kind of got to limit how much current they can provide. And I don't know what uh, protection built it. But in any case, there you can see the red LED is lit up. Now um, we're gonna look at uh, something else. I uh, do have a jumper that will work right within reach. So I'm gonna plug this also you can just go of course to the positive supply rail right there and uh, wire it up just like that as a switch uh, demonstration. And uh, thought that yeah there you go I just didn't push it in far enough. Now I showed uh, these pins on the top right there. So all four of these pins on the right are ground pins. They are, are not connected. You don't want to put a jumper there like you see the jumper here. And uh, you want to take a, uh, I forget what these are called uh, right now, um, but you want to take uh, one of these uh, female to males right there, uh, plug it in. That's in a uh, five volt spot, yeah. So we can uh, just power the positive side of the circuit with that. So there you can see that one lights up. I accidentally bumped it, but that's okay. There we go. 
and uh, that side lights up right there. So that's what these are. These four pins right there, as long as we have the uh, the jumpers uh, placed there, are the same as uh, connecting to ground. In fact, I think that's always uh, ground. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, those four pins are the same as connecting to ground. These two up here are the same as to the positive rail when we have five volts over there. I can move this down to three volts. LED won't be as uh, bright probably. Um, but in uh, any case, that should be about three volts out right there. Let's uh, let's move over to the uh, five. I think it will be a little bit uh, brighter. It's kind of coming loose. That's why the LED keeps fading. If I go to the uh, five volts, oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the female side. So what I can do is I pluck the jumper, and then I go to five right there. There we go. So yeah, I think that looks uh, a brighter right there. So yeah, this jumper is delivering the five volts to the rail. If I move the jumper between these two spots right there, it'll deliver the three volts to the rail. And then this just uh, puts the positive rail, um, both of these wires just go to the positive rail, and uh, you'll get nothing. So yeah, you could plug it in there. There's uh, all kinds of different uh, little ways that you can wire this up right there. I'm going to put this jumper back before I forget. So that was five volts. Over here will be 3.3 .3 volts out, and over here the output will turn off. So um, we uh, can't show that but with this jumper right there. I'll uh, grab this red one, and uh, we'll see that the voltage is cut off if uh, we put that little jumper in the middle. So the LED is not lit up. I'll uh, pluck it, and of course it's still not lit up now. But uh, you don't want to lose the jumper. You might as well just leave it on there. And then you plug it in there. You got 5 volts. So, yeah, I think you'll see a pretty solid light. If I go to the 3.3, .3, it's not quite as solid right there. It's uh, more dim. So you got your two options for the output voltage right there. Let's put it back to a 5. And, uh, again, the circuit we're looking at is a single pull double throw. This jumper is the pole and I can throw it into that spot or this spot here. Now another thing to be aware of with the single pole double throw switches is that this one is a break before make. When I pluck the jumper out it uh, disconnects both circuits until we go to the other one. Um, there's switches that are made out there where I guess the pole is wide enough to if you set it like halfway it's touching both of the terminals and uh, both of them would be on before you flip the other ones. There's uh, circuits where, you know, that's uh, useful. I haven't come up with any yet. Um, but if you don't want to lose power for whatever reason, when you're switching from one to the other, you don't want one circuit to lose power before the other one, or something like that, then uh, you would use a make before break. But uh, all the switches I have are break before make. As soon as you start moving, the switch uh, far enough it'll uh, disconnect from both circuits before connecting to the other so just be aware of that so now we'll look at another thing that people are interested in when it comes to this breadboard power supply again my most popular video by far I just cover the breadboard power supply um, the basics and um, so I'm gonna since people ask uh, certain questions about it repeatedly I'm gonna cover them now so we have a portable breadboard power supply here this uh, input went bad right there not gonna be used, able to use that one but in case I'm gonna plug this into it so I have a, a USB this is USB A to a barrel plug right there and um, I don't uh, think it would uh, work uh, putting it in there we would lose uh, voltage along the way so instead what we're gonna do is uh, wire it up the way uh, people uh, asked me. So we got the barrel plug there. So a female so that I can connect two males together. And uh, I bought a lot of different types of connections. We got to remove power from the breadboard right now before we do this. Now I can plug this into uh, the uh, portable power supply right there. And this should not turn on until we plug it in here. So when I plug it in here, we should get uh, five volts to the rail from the power supply. There you can see. Now, this uh, good chance it will shut off 
in uh, like maybe 30 seconds or something. I'm not sure if this one does that. Um, at uh, low current, a lot of these uh, portable power supplies shut off. So this one uh, may be the exception. I think it uh, should shut off any time now. But in any case, if it shuts off, you just hit the power button. So yeah, now we got uh, this power supply right here, and uh, USB power supply. It's it's all USB A. It does have a lightning option though. Um, something to be aware. But in any case, I plug it in, and now the LED turns on. I'm pretty sure now it's gonna turn off in like uh, 30 seconds right there. I don't think this power supply is uh, like the other one. So yeah, I didn't film it. I was getting a little worried. This power supply wasn't uh, going to do it either, and. Uh, you know, I thought I might walk away, but in any case, there you can see, it's plugged in, it's plugged in, the uh, load is off, it just turned off all of a sudden, until I hit the uh, power button again. So now, the way to overcome that is you can wire up a, a higher power uh, circuit, and uh, I got these uh, 5 volt LED modules right there, and um, I'm just going to plug it into the breadboard, but uh, if I plug it in the breadboard, these get really hot, not super quick, but you know, relatively quick. So I'm not gonna touch it for long. But yeah, that should be enough current now where it will stay on. So like we can probably light that light. And um, I think this uh, portable power supply is gonna get pretty warm uh, with this light. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, you know, what you can do is just have like switch circuitry where like uh, every 10 seconds, it turns on for like one second or something, maybe half a second, however long it needs to just kind of restart the uh, countdown with that. Um, but in case, I think the LED might have turned off by now if uh, we didn't have this. So, as I said before, these get hot and uh, cut the power, wait for them to cool down, or pluck them with like pliers or something. And uh, Neil knows pliers are really handy, including with uh, these little uh, breadboard jumpers. So we got the power supply. This is the uh, easiest way for me to pluck uh, the jumpers. I don't do that if I can get them, but if it's kind of tight, then then I'll do that. And uh, when you store them out of the way, I you know try not to put them to the power rail too much. I, I like put them in the middle there because if you put one there, one in the middle, and then accidentally put one to the other supply rail over there, or to the same supply rail, um, no, same supply rail would be okay, but you put it to the other uh, supply rail, that would be a short circuit, and that's not good for these. I have uh, blown some of these from uh, short circuits and stuff. But in any case, um, yeah, there we go. It turned off because I was rambling, but uh, hopefully uh, you still enjoyed that. So in any case, we'll turn it back on, and uh, I'm surprised. Oh, yeah, that's right. I... Uh, I moved that jumper. There we go. So, yeah, our demonstration circuit, again, you know, we were mostly focused on the uh, breadboard power supply. People seem really interested in that. Simple, or circuit's uh, fairly simple, so I don't think, uh, worry about that too much. But yeah, it's a uh, single pull, double throw. There's, uh, oops, I gotta move this one right there to uh, light the other circuit right there. So that's a common uh, component. Relays tend to come with two of these and um, if you imagine this going to the left right there you could wire that circuit up with the, uh, the relay right there it has like two of these so you could have one circuit there one circuit there they'd both be to the left and then you switch the relay then they would both move to the right right there so those two LEDs would turn on uh, you switch it back those two LEDs would be on and so on there's a lot of single pull double throws it's important to understand what it's doing it's really simple though not that too big of a deal but uh, again you looked at this power supply because uh, a lot of people are interested in it so I'm gonna use it in more uh, circuits where we got the 5 volts and I'm gonna explain the power supply a lot more because people are interested in the power supply if you just want to look at the basic circuits where I use a regular power supply I just take uh, these uh, pins right there and attach alligator clips with the jumpers going across the power both rails uh, I made tons of those videos I try to keep them you know relatively short some of them really short so thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out links down below they all help a lot I'll see you in the next video